So today I wanted to show you a couple of the updates that came out last week for Korea AI. They had a redesign to the website, they moved some of the tools around, they added some new tools, and aside from that, I also wanted to show you some little tricks that I found um, inside the, the software itself that isn't really documented, but it'll help you get better results. So here we go. So here's the new home screen for Korea AI. It's changed a few times this past week, so it may not stay this way. And at the time that you're watching this video, it could look different than this. But you'll notice that um, at the top, you have flux image generation, video generation, and edit, which is off to the side. I'm not sure why these are like off the page, like you can't get to that third window. Um, I don't know, maybe they're still working on it. but. The stuff in the middle, the generate field in the middle, you'll see uh, multiple links to things that you're familiar with. The 3D objects is new. That's like the 3D um, generator that used to be inside a real time. It's now separate. And you'll also notice that they've updated chat. They've added video restyle, which is brand new. The other thing though, is if you hover over the home screen um, icon, you're going to see links up there as well. Some of them are duplicates and some of them are additional links. I'm hoping they, they change this because it's a little confusing. But one of the things I did want to show you right out of the gate is you can now have a profile. So if you, if you go over here and set up a profile, the um, trainings that you do and the styles that you do to create your artwork will have your name uh, attached to them. Even if you don't share anything, it'll help you know which ones that you created versus the ones you've used from Korea or the ones that you've gotten from friends. And I'm gonna show you how you can share in case you would like to share styles back and forth with friends. So let's go back to the home screen and I'm gonna go over here to train. It opens up the train a style or object uh, gallery. So we're gonna click on train image style and I wanna show you something. If you upload your images, we're gonna grab this green frog. Um, I made these in Firefly just to quick, quickly make a subject that was a little creature. Um, so they're uploading now and you'll see that it'll show you if you have enough images. So low is okay, you have to have at least three. Um, it's showing you the resolution is good, and it's giving it a name right out right out of the gate. It's calling it a green amphibian um, nature. So we can we can change this name. But in here, I wanted to show you, you have default character, object, or style. So anytime you have an animal or a human, I always put it in this uh, character setting, meaning it's a character in the uh, piece of artwork we're about to create. And then there is a trigger word. Um, it says that this word in your prompt will trigger your style. I think this might be more important when you're training a style that's a background effect, like a painterly look. Not 100% sure. But down here, we're going to call this green frog. And we're going to say character so that we know it's a character. Okay, and then we would train this image. I'm not going to train it right now because that'll take a lot of time, but I did want to show you that. Now let's go back over here to our train, our train um, gallery, and I want to show you how you can share with a friend. So let's say you wanted to share this eagle with a friend of yours. This little link, see this link appears under this upper right corner when you hover over it, and you click on that, it'll take you to share your style and you can copy shared link and you can send it to a friend in either email, text, messenger, whatever you prefer. They likewise can send you a style that you can use too. So let's say you're working on a project with a bunch of people, they can each be generating styles and sharing them with each other. The next thing I wanted to show you is the 3D objects uh, panel, which is on its own page now. So if you click open, it'll launch the 3D um, objects panel here. You can upload an image. 
you can add an image here, you can add an image from assets, or you can click on text to 3D and you can make an image um, yourself. So you would type in what you wanted to make here and it'll start to build it out. And then when it's done, you'll have something like this. This is a chair that I made and it takes a couple minutes to build out. And then you can use this in the real time module to build out a scene with an animal maybe sitting on the chair and then you can change your background and then take it into edit mode and add things to it or take it into enhance mode and stylize it. So um, if I go over to editor, you'll see here, this was how I ended up stylizing the chair with the lion and it worked out pretty well. It's a nice little short chair for this big scary lion. This is a lion that I photographed. Um, the other thing inside of inside of this edit mode is when you go to change region, I did want to show you that when you have the paintbrush, with the plus key, you can make the brush bigger, and with the minus key, you can make the brush smaller. Um, nice little surprise I found in my research. It's really hard to find all the information out about some of this stuff. It's like an Easter egg hunt, which is, I guess, kind of fun. Uh, the other thing is when you use the square... Um, tool to, to, to select an area that you want to work on. You can move this around. Um, you can also, at this bottom corner, you can drag it out, up and down, make it any size you want. And then the little thing up here, if you hover right over it at exactly the right spot, which it's sometimes hard to hit, it will rotate. Um, but you got to hit it just right, and it's not working at the moment. Um, Let's try a different one. Let's make a smaller square. Maybe it'll be easier to do. So here's a smaller one. Yeah, so I guess the bigger it is, the harder it is to grab. So keep that in mind. If you're using this tool and it's not rotating, it might have to do with the size of it. So, you know, just keep that in mind as you're working on it. Um, lastly, I did want to show you that if you wanted to delete assets, people have been complaining about this, that it's really hard when you start working on something and you have a lot of assets. Uh, uh, some of the windows, you can't put a heart on your object. Um, so you don't know which is your favorite and you have to keep going back to this window to put a heart on it and then go back into the window you were working in. But you can hold down the shift key and then select multiple items that you wanted to delete. Uh, the delete button's down here. I'm not going to delete anything at this time. I just wanted to show you that. The other change they made in this window is you can, you can enlarge these, and then you can also click on the heart and just see, like, your current, you know, favorite things that you created. Um, and then you could go back to um, all assets. I think you go back to, oh, you can go down here to favorites. Here you can go to image. Um, you can go to all and that's how you can, you know, you can kind of work through all these multiple images. Now these are my favorites. So that's interesting that it's not, I guess you have to unclick. There you go. Some of these tools, we're still figuring them out, um, as users ourselves. So just trying to share with you whatever I can today. So anyway, those are some little helpful tips I wanted to pass along and I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.